You're listening to AOA, Adams on Agriculture. Hi, this is Mike Adams. You can rely on us for the latest farm and ranch news from around the world. Information America's farmers and ranchers need to know. Adams on Agriculture. Now, back to Mike Adams. Well, as we look ahead to this planting and growing season and beyond... Happy to have with us now Tom Jury. He's head of North American Field Testing for Bayer. Tom, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Mike. Appreciate it. Tell, let's look at your approach at Bayer. Tell us a little bit about uh, what is a multi-pronged approach to breeding and innovation. Yeah, so historically, you know, when we thought about what our grower customers needed, we thought about yield as being the only driver of, of value, but but today we're really having to rethink that and, and realize that everything that we do has to return value to the grower, and sometimes that's that's more than just simply thinking about the uh, about yield as a standalone. So we're trying to build up a testing network that evaluates not just yield, but the the way our customers grow our products, and then eventually be able to make recommendations down to a field or even within a field in order to help make decisions with our growers to give them the highest likelihood of success. And, and, and you know, the return portion of that would be increased profitability uh, to our grower and hopefully a more sustainable product to the environment. So helping growers produce more with fewer inputs, right? Correct. Yep. That, that's our ultimate objective. That's a, that would be a win for both of us because if we, we aren't ultimately able to do that, you know, everything we do is, is – is based on the customer's want to to buy our products. And if we can't provide that that environment where they do that with fewer inputs, lower costs, but also increase their their productivity, then then we're probably not doing what we need to do on our end of the equation. We we hear so much about collecting, storing, using data uh, in agriculture today. How does the use of data science factor into the to this innovation you're talking about at Bear? Yeah, so we're collecting uh, more information than, than we ever have before, and we're analyzing pretty much more than I ever even thought we'd be able to collect. And then you, you layer on with that you know, decades of, of historical data that we can now pull together in ways we never have before. And we're able to use things like machine learning and artificial intelligence to to really understand what every field is telling us about our products. In the past, we try to do that with simple associations by simply looking at maturity or or, or a region where something was was grown and try to make you know one to two comparisons uh, per per data cut. But today, as we're able to to amalgamate these layers of information, really understanding the the multi-factors that are are involved with driving yield, which will ultimately let us understand our our products at a much deeper level and even get us to the point where we're able to make recommendations down to that field level. So this multi-factor approach is is way better than anything we've done historically, and, and it takes a lot of compute power. And it's without the computing power, we would never have been able to do it as it's probably more information than, you know, a single person at a computer can, can put together on their own. So the, the machine learning is really going to be what provides the biggest value to the growers forward and I think has gotten to this point now where it's as important as the testing we do is our ability to, to look at that data and, and ultimately turn it into a recommendation. We're talking with Tom Jury. He's head of North American Field Testing for Bear. Well, tell us about precision breeding and how you're testing varieties so that they'll better fit within, you know, certain geographies. Sure. So precision breeding is about how we design products to, to be in a, in a particular field or geography. So in the past, we, we'd simply just make all the, the uh, crosses we could and then hopefully sort out at the back end which ones work where. With precision breeding, we're, we're actually designing the types of populations we want to make and only testing them in the environments where we think they're a good fit to really fully understand uh, holistically what that cross is doing for us. And I would say the, the key driver for this within testing, which is the organization I run, is, is really making sure we have a testing environment that mimics exactly what our grower environments are and then be able to put 
that specific genetics into that specific place so we can increase the likelihood of success for, for getting what a grower wants or needs. It, it really is going into a mode of where we want to design the best instead of the past mode where we selected the best. So let's look into your pipeline, your breeding pipeline. What can you tell us uh, that you're working on, what we'll be seeing coming soon? Yeah, when I think about what's coming, there's two things that come to mind. One is uh, short stature corn, and the other is, is this concept of tailored solutions. For short stature corn, uh, the real standout for me individually is, is sustainability. When I look at the uh, extreme environments that we've, we've uh, exposed short stature corn to, you really see it stand out relative to its tall counterparts. It has, a, it has an amazing ability to, to hold its yield and, and really secure the uh, um, yield to the, to the farmer. On the tailored solution side, this is really something that, you know, bringing companies together has enabled. Our growers, they just don't plant seed or they just don't spray chemistry. They, they have a system. They have a system that they go through the season with, and they make decisions differently as they're exposed to different things through that system. So we can amass a pretty massive set of experience for each line over the time period. So we get the line for six to eight years before the grower does, and as long as we're testing the line appropriately, we can start to understand and predict, you know, changes that happen through the growing season and, and hopefully assist our customers with the decision-making process of what they do through each season. So this is really something that's, that's exciting, and I think the data set we're putting together is going to be quite amazing. Wow. Always an interesting process, and... and Always enjoy getting a, a peek into that pipeline, what you're working on, what your approach is. Tom, thanks for being with us. Really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having me. That's Tom Jury, head of North American Field Testing for Bear.